Hello, I'm Gregory Battle, and uh, today me and my group, who consists of Sal and Diego, are going to be talking to you about exploring black doors and how black doors relate to exploitation and how you can come to this. So for this presentation, I'm going to give you a short introduction to back doors. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the types of back dooring, and then Diego is going to come give you a physical back door exam uh, examples. Uh, Sal is going to give you some remote back dooring example, and uh, Diego is going to come back with countermeasures, and then I'll finish off with the conclusion. So the first thing is, what is back dooring? Back dooring is an administrative perk that you, you, you have access to something that no other end user does. Things like this would be like a website or a device on your computer. You can access it using special credentials. Uh, why do we want to prevent that? Because with a backdoor access to any device, you, you can do anything you want to it. You can tell it to do things, you can retrieve data from it, you can write data to it. It's all problematic and when that device happens to be your personal computer, you can lose personal data. So we're very interested in countering this. So there's two types of backdooring. There's physical backdooring and remote backdooring. Physical backdooring is just what it sounds like. It's with physical access to the device. The, the golden rule of, of cybersecurity is always that the attacker has access to your physical device you're pretty much out of luck. So this is there's no real way to get around this, but there are ways to prevent it from happening at the production level. And then you have remote backdooring, which is more of the traditional attack by a hacker on a network or system to install a backdoor on your computer. And you can do this various ways. We'll be take we'll be talking about Metasploit using Meterpreter, but you can do this in almost any form of uh, hacking, you can target a router, you can target a specific computer, you can target a whole network, that type of thing. So I'm going to hand it off to Diego to talk to you about physical backdooring. Okay, hi, my name is Diego. We're going to be talking, talking about physical backdoors. Uh, there are two types of physical backdoors. You got the uh, changing of the structure of the, of the computer or actually having a device that installs a backdoor in the BIOS or the firmware of the, of, of the computer. Uh, having a device that installs a backdoor on the computer is actually uh, more of a software backdoor than a physical one because the only thing that you're actually doing is just putting the device in the computer and then the device just installs a backdoor. And the uh, uh, changing of the structure of the hardware actually takes a lot of work. Uh, you gotta know what you, uh, how the computer works, how the circuits inside the computer work, so it's really hard to do. Uh, but one of the perfect examples of physical backdoors is what people used to do in the 80s and 90s in uh, public payphones that with a simple sequence of numbers they could access the internet or actually make uh, free calls on them. Uh, that's a perk that's actually an administrative perk instead of a uh, user perk. Uh, Another example for physical backdoors is uh, the doping transistors. Uh, it's a research. Uh, it's been doing. It's been done in a research in the Massachusetts University. Uh, a transistor basically is a, a computer part that amplifies, switches, or reverses the electrical currents inside a circuit. Uh, people are attacking this transistor because this transistor actually, uh, with the electrical impulses generates the, the random numbers for the hashes on the on the encryption of the of data in your computer. Uh, so you can see in this picture, uh, since the transistor is basically a crystalline structure, you can add an impurity on that structure and make a link break so you can uh, change the flow of electricity to other two parts. What this means is that the electricity that would flow through this uh, link we we'll flow through the other two, making two different numbers instead of this one. What this implies is that you can actually uh, predict or make a constant, a number inside the circuit, instead of just a number that would be unpredictable. And this allows the 
the hacker to access data because it's just uh, it's just a constant. It will be really easy to um, get to the data. Now I'm going to hand it up to Sal to talk to you about um, examples. Hi, my name is Salman Ahmed, and I'm going to show you how to create a remote backdoor. The first thing you must do is run CAD Linux and set up uh, Meter Perturb. And um, the next thing you do you should do is. Uh, um, Set your payload to uh, reverse I, uh, TCP, and you have to do this, otherwise it won't work. Um, and if you need help, you can run persistence-h to view the help list. And next, you must set up your uh, persistent meter perturb session to wait until the user logs in, and try to connect back every five seconds to listen to the listener. And uh, you, it's recommended that you connect back to the IP address on the port. And when you're done with this, a script should pop up and give you the command on um, whether to remove the listener or not. And basically, to make sure this works, it's recommended that you try and reboot the system and set up your payload handler. And these are the steps. The first two lines basically mean to set your payload to reverse TCP. The next line is to set your local host to your IP. And next, you uh, set your remote host to the IP of the target. <clears throat> the next thing you should do is set the local port to a vulnerable, the, the port you're gonna exploit. And when you're done with that, the, the final step is just to exploit. And, <clears throat> when, the, the, and when the user uh, logs in, re-logs in, uh, the backdoor is thus established and a connection between the attacker and host is basically established. And these are examples of a remote access backdoor. Firstly, a remote access backdoor is basically a malicious attack on a computer system or any computer system whatsoever or network systems. And uh, um, remote access backdoors are basically uh, uh, meant to steal data or you know, view data or basically just uh, cause damage on any specific network or computer party. And the first uh, example is uh, domain name system poisoning or DNS for short. This method basically uh, tricks the DNS server into accepting non-credible information as if it's true. The second is denial of service attacks, and this is, or DOS for short, this attack uh, makes an online service unavailable by overwhelming it and flooding it with multiple sources. An example is what happened recently in Minecraft, where, uh, servers, where players weren't allowed to play because the servers were over flooded from multiple sources. And the third and final is port scanning. Computer ports are actually very responsible for allowing data to be sent and received, and port scanners help identify vulnerable data. And hackers usually gain access of this by targeting the, compiler, the computers. And if a port is always open, a website can send and receive messages. And what hackers usually do is disguise themselves as the websites to gain access to the port. Next, I'll be giving it to Diego. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about countermeasures, the physical and the software countermeasures that you can take about backdoors. Uh, the physical countermeasures, uh, from the user's perspective, actually preventing and detecting these types of vectors is virtually impossible because now the vectors is in, installing your hardware and you can't know that it's there because you're, you're actually working on the software, not the hardware. Uh, these countermeasures are actually directed to the companies because they can actually oversee the production line and see that nobody ha ha uh, hacks the system. Uh, this could cause a problem because most of our hardware comes from international uh, manufacturers or factories. Um, well, the, in the U.S., they can't actually uh, oversee that production line. So what the companies must do is hire a team, a trusted, a trusted team and an experienced team to send over there to the factory and oversee all, the whole production Cre and create a system that actually uh, follow, follows the hardware from the beginning of the, produ the production until the end. Uh, the next thing that they must do is create a system that tracks the IP address of the system that uh, now that it's out of the production line until it reaches the user. Uh, they, they must do this because once it reaches the user, you can actually check if that computer that the user got is the same as the, as, as the, the computer that the manufacturer uh, 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 email. Uh, if you already have a backdoor and you detect it as a user, there are three things that you can do from preventing from installing in the 
in the hardware. Uh, the first thing you can do is when the backdoor is time-based trigger. Uh, that's when the uh, the backdoor tracks the system uh, since it's since it's been turned on. Uh, can you when you can do to prevent this is res uh, restarting the computer once you turn it on. The second the second thing is when the trigger is input based, and that doesn't mean what the what the user inputs inside the keyboard is when the data is stored in the memory, because uh, when the data is stored in the memory, the hashes that it creates that in, that encrypts the data into the memory, uh, they can be read by the backdoor. So the how you prevent this using a different encryption system, a different encryption program, so that the backdoor can actually read that, that, those hashes. The third one is sequence, sequence trigger. Uh, like the second one, it sees the actual hash of the, of the data, but it doesn't look at a single one, it looks at a sequence of them. So if the user inputs a sequence of, of data and the data is stored in the memory with those specific hashes that the backdoor needs to be triggered, then the, the backdoor is going to get installed or it's, or it's going to do something else. The way to prevent this is have a program that actually scrambles the sequence of, uh, of data when it's stored in the memory. Uh, now for software kind of measures. Uh, from the, this, uh, all these, counter, these countermeasures are from the user, which actually has a computer now. Uh, the first one is never click on any uh, uh, link that you get from uh, that you don't know what, where they're from or where they will go to. Uh, when you get a link that you don't know, actually type it in the browser, and that will prevent that will prevent it from installing anything that you don't know. Uh, the second one is the antiviruses. Uh, the antiviruses, when you start on your computer, you just can't assume that it's going to stop any virus that, that is going to get into your computer because the viruses. They, st they stay the same, but the, the way they get into your computer changes almost daily. So for, if you get the antivirus, you actually have to keep updating it to keep up with the ways that backdoors may be selling your, in your system. And the third way is a tool called Tripwire, which is a, a data verification tool. What it does is takes a screenshot, a screenshot of your hashes or your data stored in, in the computer once you install the tool. So if you get this tool, the best thing you would do is uh, get it once you get the computer because when you take the screenshot, that baseline that it has is going to be compared to any other uh, data that you download. So if you take the baseline, uh, are you already being hacked, the, the base is going to be hacked so it's not going to change uh, the hack system. And this does not erase a uh, hack one a backdoor once once it's inside the system. What it does is prevent and detect if one is about to be downloaded into your system. Now I'm going to hand it over to Greg to the uh, the conclusion. Hello. So today we talked to you about backdooring in all of its entirety. You know some examples of exploits and some examples of countermeasures. Uh, the first topic we covered was the types of backdooring, physical and remote. Uh, physical backdooring is, of course, more dangerous and hard to prevent, but it also requires the, the need to have the computer. And then remote backdooring is more common, but l less likely to work. So remote backdooring re uh, relies on a vulnerability of the person, the user, using their computer and physical relies on having access to it. Things like ATMs, like pay phones, like Diego said, those are all good devices that have back doors put in by administrators. 